Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on seven secrets of summary writing that scores high in your English exams. West African Senior School Certificate English Preparatory Lesson. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Make sure you click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel, you will be notified instantly. Let's dive into the lesson right away. Our brief agenda is made up of the three WH, two WH and, uh, and H. Why, what, and how. Number one, why is summary writing an important section in the exam? Two, what does the summary question require you to do? Three, how to answer summary questions in the exam. And of course, it is under uh, number three that we will look at the key steps to take. Now, summary questions in the WIAC exam usually occur in section C of the English language theory questions. Why is summary writing an important section in the exam? Of course, you need to understand that summary writing carries 30 marks. Summary writing is in section C of the theory questions. And the theory questions, of course, carry the uh, the greatest uh, number of marks in the exam. For example, essay writing, which is in section A, carries 50 marks. Compre reading comprehension, which is in section B, carries 40 marks. And summary writing, which is in section C, carries 30 marks. So if you learn the techniques and uh, the tricks and tips we discuss on this channel, and you are able to score high in the theory part of the exam, of course, you are sure to uh, score A in the English language exam. You can see that if you are able to capture the largest chunk of the marks within the theory questions part, then you are sure to score exceedingly high in the entire exam, all right? Summarizing is a skill that is of central importance to your success in all your studies. So apart from the fact that uh, knowing how to summarize correctly will help you to do well in your English exams. You also need the summarizing skill, which is of central importance to your success in your studies. And even beyond that, uh, it will also be helpful to you in other areas of your life. But suffice it to say that your ability to extract the main ideas from what you are reading is key to your academic success. Number two, what does the summary questions require you to do? You are required to summarize certain ideas in the passage in a specified number of sentences. 
uh, we are zeroing in on the senior school certificate examination, notably the West African senior school certificate examination. In, the, in that specific exam, uh, just like in NACO 2, National Examinations Council, uh, your summary writing is required to be presented in a specified number of sentences. And uh, we are going to look at this specifically. Now let's look at some questions from the West African Senior School Certificate Examination of June 2020. Now we have two summary questions in that year's exam. And a question A is, in three sentences, one for each, state three benefits derived from forests. B, in three sentences, one for each, state three measures to control deforestation. All right, so let's look at how to answer summary questions in the exam. At this juncture, we are going to examine the seven key steps to take in order to answer summary questions correctly in this exam. Step number one, read the questions first. All right. Now, this will help you to know what to look for when you start reading the passage. Because when you read the questions first, then you, you gain the added advantage of having an overview of what the passage is all about, even before reading the passage. Reading the questions first already, you know, gives you an idea of what the passage is about. Now, from the questions we read, uh, in, you know, questions A and B from June 2020 summary uh, section, uh, we already uh, have an idea as to what the passage is about. Now, let me show you this. For example, in question A, in three sentences, one for each, state three benefits derived from forest. So that gives us idea that the passage is about forests and the benefits that can be derived from them. And then question B gives us even additional information. In three sentences, one for each, state three measures to control deforestation. So the benefits derivable from forests and how to solve the problem of deforestation, which is the depletion of forests. All right, so read the questions first because it has a lot of advantages. When you read the questions first, it enables you to read with a purpose when you start reading the passage eventually. At that juncture, you can begin to read you know, for answers right away. You read with a purpose. So reading the question first facilitates understanding and saves time. That is secret number one. Step number two, read the passage carefully and make sure you understand what it is about. One of the major uh, mistakes most students or candidates make is to jump into answering uh, summary questions without a complete or full understanding of what uh, the passage is about. There are two things you need to understand. Number one, you need to understand what you are asked to summarize, all right? It's like when, if you are sent into a place to bring a parcel, and then you get to the place in a hurry and you forget what you have been asked to pick from there. It's a wasted journey because even if you spend many weeks looking for 
what you don't know, you will end up not actually picking what you have been asked to pick because you don't know it. So you need to understand what you have been asked to summarize. And then you need to read the passage carefully and identify exactly what you have been asked to summarize, understand it and summarize it correctly in the way that the examiner has specified. That's really very, very important. So while reading the passage, you read with a purpose and reading with a purpose means you read with the intention of identifying the key ideas required for answering the questions, all right? So that is what it really means. Step number three, extract the points you are asked to summarize the moment you come across them in the passage. In fact, this is one of the greatest uh, reasons why you read the questions first, because you want to register in your mind what exactly you have been asked to summarize. So that as you begin to read the passage, the moment you come across the main points you have been asked to summarize, you extract them. So that is step number three. You begin to extract the points you are asked to summarize the moment you come across them in the passage. You have to read the passage until you identify the key points you are asked to summarize. And the moment you come across them in the passage, you extract them or you underline them. All right, just identify them and bring them out for keeps. All right. Now, there are certain things that will help you to extract these main ideas. You need to use context clues to identify the points required in the questions. How do you do it? At the point when you are reading the questions, you need to look for the key words contained in the summary questions. For example, you know, question A from 2020 summary questions. In three sentences, one for each, state three benefits derived from forests. So you can see that the real, the, uh, the actual context clues here, are uh, the keywords. Now, benefits derived from forests. This is the key expression. You are looking for the keywords. And now, benefits. So you register this in your mind. This is the main thing you are taken from reading the questions. You arm yourself with the key words or the key expression or the key statement or the key phrase. Well, the key point, if you like, that you have been asked to summarize, you, you take it away from the question, from the summary question, and then you take it to the passage. And then benefits derived from forest. They this will give you the clue, all right? And because when you are reading the passage, anywhere you find something that is related to benefits derived from forest, that gives you a clue. Now, a co context clue is a word or a group of words that gives you a signal that yes, you have come to the point where uh, you will find what you are looking for. So that is exactly what we mean by context clue. So you need to use the context clues to identify the points required in the questions. Then question B, in three sentences, one for each, state three measures to control deforestation. So you can see three measures to control deforestation. You pick this expression and register it in your mind. 
That's what you are going to look for in the passage when you are about to answer question B, all right? So that is exactly the way to go. This is how to really, really simplify uh, summary writing. Now, uh, this actually belongs to uh, what I call the scientific method, because once you use the, the accurate procedure, then you come out with the accurate results. Now, step number four, reconstruct or paraphrase the points you extracted from the passage in your own sentences. Don't forget that one of the don'ts for some rewriting is avoid the inclusion of unnecessary material. So now, once you have extracted the sentences or the key points from the passage, you need to change the wordings. You need to paraphrase these extracted uh, expressions from the passage. Change them in your own words because summary writing is all about extracting the main points from a given passage and presenting them in your own words. You don't have to present them verbatim or word for word, all right? You need to paraphrase the points you extracted from the passage. This is absolutely necessary. Now to paraphrase the writer's sentences, you need to use certain word reduction methods. Now you can see we have word reduction methods. And I want to discuss this with you. When you master word reduction methods, they help you to reconstruct or paraphrase your extracted expressions. Now, the first one, which is A, if you, if you come across a sentence that contains the perfect tense in it, then you know you need to change the perfect tense to the simple tense because that enables you to reduce words. Let's use this simple example. Now, the soldiers have killed 10 insurgents. Have killed, of course, is the, uh, is the, the perfect tense, have killed. This is the perfect tense. All right. Now you look at this sentence that uses the perfect tense. It contains six words. Now, when we change the perfect tense to the simple tense, what we have is the soldiers killed 10 insurgents. So what we have done is that we have removed half. And so we reduce the sentence to five words, all right? Then the second word reduction method. Don't forget that summary writing is all about reducing words. Summary writing is different from essay writing. In essay writing, you develop your essay in several paragraphs. It is called continuous writing. Now, in summary writing, you are expected to condense your work. I mean, the passage. It's all about reducing words. So that's why you need to master the various methods of reducing words, all right? Then the second word reduction method is to change passive to active verbs. You know, let's take this simple example. Now, the sentence I uses the passive, te uh, sen uh, passive verb. This book was written by Aditya. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six words. 
Now, if we change this to active, then the subject comes uh, first, the doer of the action, the writer occupies the subject position. So, and then the verb uh, is in the active uh, verb. So Adichie wrote this book. Now you see what we have is one, two, three, four. We have four words. We have reduced from uh, six words to four words by simply changing the passive to the active verbs. The third word reduction method is to remove the modifiers in a sentence. Modifiers are adjectives, adverbs, and other words or phrases that simply give additional information that are not part of the core meaning of the sentence, but rather give additional information. Now let's look at the modifiers in this sentence. Now, Ada's bag is blue in color. So you can see in color is uh, the, the additional modifiers here. You know, Ada's bag is blue. Now, if we analyze this sentence, what we have is Ada's bag is the subject, then is is the verb blue is the complement you can see blue is the complement so you have s v c you know so this is actually an adjective but is not uh, functioning as a modifier here uh, it is actually functioning as a complement in this sentence the actual modifier we have is in color, all right? All right, in color. So now these are modifiers. And what we do here is we remove in color the modifiers here. And once we remove the modifiers, then we reduce the words from six to four. And what we have in sentence II is a das bag is blue we have removed in color because actually it is even a tautology, all right? It is tautological. So it is good we remove those modifiers because they are unnecessary. They belong to what we call unnecessary material. And summary writing makes use of the agricultural concept of weeding. In weeding your farm, you remove unwanted plants. And so modifiers are unwanted uh, words and phrases when it comes to summarizing the passage. So you eliminate that. Now, the fourth method is to remove examples or illustrations, all right? Now, when you write, you state a key point and then you give examples of the key point. Now, in summarizing, you need to eliminate the examples and retain the key point. For example, we look at sentence one here. Most of the roads are full of potholes and some are too narrow to accommodate two vehicles coming from opposite direction. Now you see the key point here is, is derivable from this. We, two examples have been given here and they are all pointing to the same thing. You know, these are all examples of bad roads. All right, all right. When you have potholes, in a road, then you can describe it as a bad road. Now, when the road is too narrow to accommodate two vehicles coming from opposite direction, opposite directions, that also is uh, evidence of bad road. So all you need to do is to use the keywords to eliminate 
the examples or illustrations. And so here, because of the presence of the examples or illustrations here, we have 21 words in this sentence. Then all we need is to extract the key point and we reduce the sentence to six words. Most of the rules are bad, simple, all right? So you can see how, uh, you can see how uh, drastic, you know, this method is you know, eliminating the examples or illustrations that reduces the words from 21 to six words. Uh, I should also add here, perhaps the point E, all right? So let me illustrate. I, I remember another example, uh, you know, another word reduction method, we can call this E, all right? And that is, um, changing sentences that begin with there, all right? For example, there are many many states that cannot pay okay that cannot repay the loans they took from the federal government. Well, let's say there are many state governments All right. There are many state governments that cannot all right. So now you can see how many words that are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So here we have all right, here we have sixteen words okay now if we have to now if we have to reconstruct this let's see okay let's if we reconstruct this now let's reconstruct this and what we have here is, so we eliminate the array. So, and what we have is many states, governments cannot repay loans. Okay, so then if we also remember the principle, uh, all right, okay, the loans they took from the federal government. 
Okay, let's now count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So you can see here we have thirteen words. The other one contains sixteen words. This one contains thirteen words. So you see that there are various methods of reducing words. All right. Then there are also other examples. Uh, let's um, let's look at another example, and that is let's call this F. Replacing phrases or clauses, all right, if you like. with single words, all right? Now, for example, let's call this sentence I, sentence I, Okun is a man whose wife has died. So let's look at how many words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here we have eight words. Eight words, okay? Then we look at sentence I, I, and so what we do here is to replace the, well, this actually is not even just a phrase, is a clause. A man whose wife has died is called a widower. So we replace a man whose wife has died with a single word, widower. And there are many expressions like that, that you can replace with just a single word. So what we do here is to say Okun is a widower. So you can see how many words do we have? One, two, three, four. So you can see we have reduced the words from eight to four. That's, we have cut it by half. So you can see there are different methods of reducing words that you can apply, that you can use when summarizing a passage. And once you learn these techniques, after extracting the uh, writer's words or sentences or expressions in, in converting them, changing them to your own words, you use these various word reduction methods. So that's exactly the way to do it. Let's now erase the marks we, we have here so that as we go to the next, we go, uh, we find a clean slide so we won't get confused. All right, so now let's get to step number five. This is where you present your answers in the specified number of sentences. This means you have to make sure you use three sentences, you know, uh, to convey three points as specified in the question. For example, in three sentences, one for each, 
state's three benefits derived from forest. You cannot use four sentences where you are required to write only three. All right, so what you need to do is to make sure you present your answers in the specified number of sentences. In three sentences means in three sentences. You see, this is where most candidates fail woefully because the examiner has given a definite instruction here. Present your answers in three sentences. So when you, be, when you now begin to write multiple sentences, you have entirely messed up your answers. You have, of course, flouted the instruction and you are not going to win maximum marks when you are disobedient, all right? So now in presenting your summary answers, you may or may not use a preamble. You see a, what a preamble is an opening statement that introduces a number of ideas, two or more ideas. You know, you use a preamble for answers that require two or more sentences. If it is an answer that requires only one sentence, you don't need a preamble. A preamble is an opening statement that, in, that is used to introduce a number of ideas. Now, to use a preamble, let me show you the example of how to do it. Now, um, let's go back to the question and then I will show you how to use a preamble. You can see in three sentences, one for each, state three benefits derived from forest. So you cut off the remaining one, the, the, the rest of the sentence, and this is where you start. You say three benefits derived from forest are, so this is how you carve out your preamble from the question. You come to question B, in three sentences, one for each, state three measures to control deforestation. Again, you cut the rest off and you begin here. Three measures to control deforestation are, so this is a preamble, all right? That is exactly how you come about your preamble, all right? So this is exactly how to uh, create a preamble. And uh, having seen that, we can now look at the example here. This is an example of a preamble. You know, in answering the question, question A that we earlier saw, this is the preamble. All right, let me actually indicate. This is the preamble here. Three benefits derived from forests are, this is a preamble. This is an opening statement that we now use, you know, to introduce those three benefits. That is a preamble. So if you decide to use a preamble, it is acceptable. If you do not want to use a preamble, you simply do away with the preamble and present your, your answers directly like this. You simply write A and you write I and you present these answers. Now, where you decide to use a preamble, then this is the way to present it. These are two options, two optional ways of presenting your summary answers and whichever method you adopt is acceptable. Now, one thing you must note is that these answers must be in sentences because the instruction is in three sentences, not in three phrases, not in three words, all right? Not in three subordinate clauses. All right, so this is exactly what you need to take note of. Three benefits derived from forests are, then you write I, forests protect lands against erosion. That's one of the benefits. 
And don't forget, you are not inventing these answers from your imagination. You are taking them from the passage and then you are making changes so that you present the answers in your own words. All right? Then to I, I, forest provides wood for producing pepper, all right? That's the second benefit. I, 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 forests provide food for human beings and animals. So these are the three benefits derived from forest. You can see that when you uh, follow the accurate procedure, then you get the accurate results. Like I said earlier, it is possible for you to score the maximum marks. You can score the 30 marks in summary writing. Because in summary writing, once you get a, an answer correctly, the, like this first sentence is the correct answer, then you have won the, the marks. Then once you get this tree, you have, you have won the marks. If you answer question B and you get the three sentences correctly, then of course, each sentence contains five marks. So with, in these three correct sentences, we have already scored 15 marks. When you apply the same, uh, the same uh, technique uh, to answering question B and you get the three answers correctly, you get another 15 marks. And so you win the 30 marks. All right, so that is exactly the way to go. So let's erase this and then see what is left. Okay, so step number six, make sure you use complete sentences in your answers, all right? You don't have to uh, use phrases or subordinate clauses or any other incomplete sentences. For example, you know, if you come here and you write protecting lands against erosion, you see that what you have here is an incomplete sentence. In fact, this is just a phrase, protecting lands against erosion is not a sentence. So if you write this, then of course you lose marks because you have violated the rule. You are asked to present your answer in sentences and now you are trying to present them in phrases. Not acceptable to the examiner at all. All right, so you need to write forest protect lands against erosion. Of course, you can reconstruct the sentence anyhow you want. The important thing is that it should contain the key idea and it should be a complete sentence. Now, if the passage is about, uh, about uh, road accidents and uh, you, you may be about factors responsible for increase in road accidents. And one of the ideas that is required for, that you are asked to summarize, you are asked to summarize the factors responsible for increase in road accidents as discussed in the passage. And one of them is bad roads. Now, if you simply, write bad roads. This is an incomplete expression. It's a phrase. This is a noun phrase. It's not a sentence. Now you need to simply state a sentence. The roads are bad. This is a complete sentence. So you must avoid incomplete expressions. You are asked to summarize in sentences. So do not come with phrases or any other incomplete expression. Now, step number seven, which is the last but not the least of the key steps to be taken, is that you need to cross-check your work. Very, very important. Now, you need to make sure 
that you correct any errors in your answers. For example, you need to ensure that your answers are free from grammatical errors where you are supposed to use uh, the present tense of the verb. If you use the past tense, it's a grammatical error, all right? Where you are supposed to pluralize a noun and you come with a singular noun, it is a grammatical error. Then if you, if you misspell certain English words, you lose marks. Where you are supposed to put a punctuation mark such as a full stop, you know, when we uh, define a, a sentence orthographically, you know, uh, the orthographic, orthographical uh, definition of the sentence is that a sentence is a group of words. Well, let's make this longer. A group of words that begins with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. Now you can see, for example, Okun is a widower. This is a complete sentence. You see that it begins with the capital letter O, all right? It begins with the capital letter O, and then it ends with the punctuation mark full stop. Now, if you begin this sentence with small letter O, then it is a uh, is an error of capitalization. It's a grammatical error, all the same, but specifically, it's error of capitalization. Where you are supposed to use a capital letter, you use a small letter. And you know that Okun is the name of a person. It belongs to the group of nouns we call a proper noun, all right? Uh, so even if Okun, is in the end of the sentence, it should still be in capital letter because it's a proper noun. The widow, I told you about is Okun, all right? So because it's a proper noun, whether it begins a sentence or it is at the end of the sentence, it must be in capital letter. So if you write Okun with small letter, it is a blunder, all right? So these are things you need to watch. Now you have to look at punctuation, look at spelling errors, look at grammatical errors. You correct everything before you submit your script. And that is exactly the way to go. So this is how it has been uh, in today's lesson. We are going to draw the curtain here. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's um, lesson. If you really enjoyed the lesson, make sure you like the video and share it with your friends and relations. We have been discussing the seven secrets of summary writing that score high in your English exams. And uh, I hope you learned uh, all the lessons that will help you to, uh, to summarize your summary passage accurately in any English exam in order to win or score high in that particular exam. 
Now, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you, you subscribe to the channel right away by clicking on the subscribe button below. You will find a red button tagged subscribe. Simply click on it and you will be subscribed to, the, to this channel. And the benefit of subscribing to the channel is that you will have full access to all the videos I upload on this channel. And once you are subscribed to the channel, make sure you click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly notified. If you have any questions or suggestions or any topic you in mind that you would like me to discuss in subsequent uh, lessons, do not hesitate to leave your comments in the comments section below. I want to say a big thank you to all of you out there who have been uh, part of today's episode and those of you who have give, been giving maximum support to this channel. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye for now. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon. Click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly notified. If you have actually enjoyed the video, like and share the video with your friends and relatives. This is very important. If you have any comments, leave your comments below. Any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new video. Thank you and remember.